uh, clients coming in and, and trying it, actually, I think they've been fairly aware of their condition and they'll try and hide it from you because they know that it's going to require them to go and see their GP again for whatever reason. Um, the heart move class that Emily suggested for the guys that don't know is a uh, is a program that's been developed by the Heart Foundation, so sort of Bob in this case would definitely fall into uh, their sort of target group. I believe that there is some sort of uh, uh, sort of pre-screening assessment similar to what we just covered here, but I think they have the option of uh, like a legal waiver to basically acknowledge that it's been hasn't been that long since the client's been to their GP and that their GP's recommended them to do some sort of low uh, intensity cardio exercise. So I would say in that instance is probably about all that Bob could do. Um, other times when I've been in this situation, I've recommended sort of moderate stretch or like low intensity stretching, that sort of, that sort of thing, just sort of to uh, introduce them and to kind of keep them in the gym. Obviously, it's a difficult situation uh, when you've got a motivated client that you sort of kind of and, uh, and make sure you get all the forms kicked off. But um, what did everyone else think of that scenario? Really good. I thought Bob was awesome. <laughs> I love your loop diuretics. Yep. <laughs> oh, thanks very much. I love them too. <laughs> What's really interesting, Craig, is the number of patients who come into hospital and say, no, I don't have a blood pressure problem and you go through their medications and they're on any hypertensives, it's the same sort of scenario. No, I'm fine, but they're only fine because of their drugs. Uh, and that's exactly sort of what I wanted to make, uh, I guess, aware of, of to the students uh, by doing this scenario. You know, we get very similar sort of things there too. And as the clients to, uh, or aren't initially currently aware of their symptoms, uh, they sort of forget that they have uh, that actually have been diagnosed and the problem still there. So it's good to sort of see that the scenario is uh, is getting there. And I mean, I'm gonna have to look into uh, maybe sort of scripting the uh, the client a little bit more, um, and that way it sort of we can direct uh, where we want the student to go with the situation. But um, I think it worked really well. Uh, what Penny has done there is, uh, yes, yeah, so with the learning elements, obviously it's attached to the screening and programming in the pre-assessment stuff um, of the Certificate 3 and 4 in fitness. I suppose the only uh, comment I'd make is that um, for the instructor, especially in this sort of a scenario, it, to have a com actual filled in um, medical form um, would probably have given us more of a, of a working idea and um, I fully know how busy Craig's been with um, uni stuff so no jab there Craig but um, that's probably something we'll just need to add on to with the um, scenario. It was less, like I said I think I'm uh, I kind of like the idea of keeping it unscripted in that it puts the student well, you know, in more into a, into a real situation where they've got to sort of respond to what the client is saying. Um, but it, it, I do like the fact that with scripted scenarios or, or semi-scripted scenarios, you, we can sort of lead students to outcomes that we want and it sort of flows and, and it achieves it a little bit easier. I think it's a good scenario as well because it's actually quite a positive scenario and as in it's not one of those ones where somebody's angry or upset it's in fact somebody that's super keen to do something and you've actually got to calm them down which is sort of a different sort of skill set to what normally you work on so yeah no I think it's kind of cool. <laughs> 